Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning into Carol's Daily Sauce. Please do like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to click on that bell so that you are reminded of each and every video or recording, video recording that I upload. What I'm talking about on today are some news stories. And I believe that I have maybe four or five. And these are some really, really, really weird news stories. So do me a favor and share it out. You may have already heard about some, but I do my little investigation um, pretty thoroughly to find out some really interesting things. The first one that we're talking about today is we're talking about a woman from um, California. Yep, the state that I live in. Uh, there was a woman in Claremont, California, who on Easter Sunday, um, threatened to open fire at a church service, at an Easter Sunday church service. The pastor of the church was um, instructing everyone. Once she came in, came down the hallway, helped herself up onto the podium with the baby on her hip, as well as her five-year-old child alongside of her, banishing a gun. Now, the pastor indicated to... young lady and I do have her name her name is Anna Anna Conkey is her name Anna had been being very disruptive the whole week of Easter 2019 the whole entire week and I don't know if you guys are familiar with it but as Christians during the Easter week there are um, a lot of different services that go on um, in church churches there are a lot of different uh, churches, so uh, church services throughout the week. Anna had been instructed because she was blurting out and doing things that it was to her advantage not to come to service on Sunday morning, which she in fact just decided to come. And when she came, she came banishing a gun, baby on the hip and her five-year-old other child. The pastor mentioned to the parishioners that Everybody, just get on your knees. Just get on your knees and begin to pray. And then he said, no, everyone just needs to go outside. So they began to get up and go outside. In the midst of them approaching the outdoors, the pastor decided to talk to Anna. And he said, Anna, it's just a taser. But we're going to go ahead and have everyone to go outside. He told Anna that she needed to put the gun down and that the police were on their way. Now, prior to Anna even coming to the church, she had already made a threat that she was going to blow up the church building. The church actually had security that day. And I assume they probably have security all the time now. But their security, I don't know what kind of security they have because Anna was able to get into the church building via a back door. So she threatens to blow up the church to the police officers, to the local police department, as well as comes into the church with the gun, with the baby on her hip. Um, Churchgoers uh, that were at the service were eventually able to wrestle Anna down to the floor and get the gun from her. They also were able to take her baby and hold her until the police were able to come to the church and subdue her. Later, the police determined that the gun that Anna had was not a taser. It was in fact a gun, but it was unloaded. Pastor Wisson said that Anna Conkley had disrupted several uh, services uh, during the weeks before the incident. So that right there in and of itself is a problem, okay? Um, the pastor said that he had tried to set up meetings with Anna as well as with 
other deacons and those who were officers within the church, but he was just unable to. He was unable to meet with her, counsel with her. Now, I don't know whether he was unable to because she just refused to, and that probably is the case because anybody who could clearly go into a church that they attend banishing a gun is really out of their minds. They, they really are out of their minds. Make a long story short, Anna was arrested and is facing several charges, okay? Felony accounts, okay? So not just misdemeanors. And we knew she wasn't gonna get a misdemeanor because I mean, she had a gun. In addition to having a gun, she had a baby on her hip. So the first felony charge that she is being charged with obviously is child abuse. The second charge is making criminal threats and making reports, making false reports of having a bomb. Okay, so you guys, let's talk about this. Do we believe that there should be, or do you believe that there should be certain precautions taken at churches across the nation to prevent this from happening? Now, we know a couple of years ago, there was a Caucasian gentleman who went into a church where African Americans were having a church service. He came into the church, he sat down. At that time when he came into the church and he sat down, the parishioners weren't thinking anything. Just like my church, the church that I was attending before I moved out of the city that I was living in, people would come off the street. The city that I lived in, Fairfield, California, had a huge problem with homelessness. And so a lot of times when it was cold, a lot of times people who are homeless have other problems such as drug addictions, mental issues, and things of that nature. And even when it's cold, even when it's rainy, if they know that you're serving food, they will come to the church for their game. Now, I will say this, there are a lot of people who are tired of living the way they're living and they honestly, honestly want help from the church. But there are some people who are willing to do any and everything that they can do. My question is, what type of precautions can churches all across the nation take um, to prevent these types of things from happening? I was thinking, I was like, Lord, if there comes a time in this world where I have to go through a gun or metal detector to go to church, guess what? I am no longer going. I will be right at my house looking at mega pastors on the TV or mega pastors on YouTube. I am not going to be at a church where people are banishing guns because the one thing that I've always been taught by my mother is bullets are not looking for anybody by name. Ain't a bullet out there saying, I'm coming to penetrate blue, blue, blue. A bullet is just being shot and penetrated into a vessel or a building or a structure. So um, yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Personally, um, what I would have done if I were a pastor, I am not a pastor, but what I would have done is I would have contacted the authorities about her behavior earlier in the week prior to the Easter service. And I would have also recommended to her not to come to the Easter service. If you didn't have enough time, you didn't make enough time to come and have counsel with the officers and those deacons and pastors within the church, then you don't need to be to church on Easter. I personally believe based on her behavior that she was either dealing with some mental issues or dealing with some problems within her family life, maybe within her marriage. In my searching, I did notice that she's prior military and was banishing a huge uh, assault rifle. Um, so maybe she just has a fascination with guns. Maybe she um, is just mentally ill. Maybe she just wanted to make a name for herself. She certainly did. She's now going to go to jail uh, for those felonies. Um, by the pastor notifying the authorities, the authorities would have been forewarned. They probably would have been out 
side of the church. She probably would not have been able to sneak in through um, the back door and the foolery that she had on, but foolery that she had um, on Easter Sunday would not have even went forth. Now, when you are in a church service and a pastor is preaching about salvation and people's lives being changed, through the love of Christ. And then you got this crazy lady in the back of her, in the back of the pastor, him, I'm sorry. And she's got a gun and a baby on her hip. Y'all, she look crazy. Um, I would have requested the police get back up. I surely would have. Um, and indicated that she was unstable because at that time, even if the police were unable to be at the church on that Easter Sunday, because they are bigger, crimes to tackle. They could have given her a warning that if you go there that you'll be arrested. Now, it may not have changed anything. Crazy as she was and is, she probably still would have been there anyway, but at, at least she would have been forewarned. Go ahead and put in the comments what you think about that. I had not even heard about that. And this happened in California. Okay, here's another story. This happened in Oregon, Portland, Oregon. The authorities in Portland, Oregon have a huge clue as to who broke into and has broken into several cars in a Portland suburb. There have been several break-ins for weeks and the police have been on the lookout for the predator to no avail. However, here is an update on this story. A young man broke into a car looking for what God knows what not realizing that the car had vehicle surveillance, that the car was equipped with a vehicle surveillance system. The camera caught this man getting into the car, looking straight into the dash camera, and then rushing out. I will insert the picture where he noticed. I am assuming that he could see his face because when you see the picture, you will see the shocked look that he has on his face that he is in fact caught. When the owner of the car played the video back, she found it extremely hilarious at how stunned, scared, and dumb the bur burglar who broke in the car looked. Now the police know exactly who they're looking for and they are on a search to find this car burglar. People really need to get a life. I mean, you know, I was raised pretty strict by in a single family home. My mother raised uh, four children, three girls and one boy. You guys have heard this. And my mother was raised in Alabama and so she had a lot of Southern roots. She had a lot of Southern roots. And one thing my mother always taught us, you don't touch nothing if it don't belong to you. I don't care if it's food. I don't care if it's, it, there's a different story when you are finding things, when you have found something. But my mother always used to tell us, you can't find nothing in somebody else's home. So if you can't find something that doesn't belong to you in someone else's home, you most definitely cannot find something in someone else's car or their property. I thank God for the mother that I had because my mother taught me some wonderful things. So much so that I don't touch nothing that doesn't belong to me. And if in fact it's something, even food, if in fact, if there is food at the house, and I didn't purchase it, I always ask. Most of the time, I don't even do that because I purchase my own stuff. Okay, another crazy story. Now this one, she done lost her whole entire mind. A woman in a Bronx Zoo. Taunts a lion. So there was a woman at the Bronx Zoo who somehow was able to foolishly climb into 
an African lion's den at the zoo. She was waving at the lion, who was only a few feet away from her, as the lion looked at her confusingly. I know that lion was like, who is this big fool up in here? She then did a little dance for the lion and act a donkey as people were taking pictures of her. Somehow, the woman was able to climb over the visitor safety barrier. Spokesperson at the zoo said that the action in which the lady did was a serious violation and was unlawful trespassing. You guys, forgive Sammy. Stop it. Stop it. Was unlawful trespassing. Um, the spokesperson also stated that it was clear that she didn't know the danger that she was putting herself in or she didn't even care. Maybe she had, maybe she wanted to die. Maybe she wanted to be torn to shreds by a lion, which is crazy, but that he was very grateful and happy that the incident did not end in serious injury or even death. Um, there's no known information as to whether the zoo officials um, press charges against the uh, young lady or anything. The one thing about it that Say I is this, I don't know if you guys can remember, I've always been this nerdy woman. From the time I was a teenager, I read everything, world news, US and world news, Fox news, I listen to the news. Um, and there was a story some years ago about a woman in the Philippines who was in a car with her husband. And in the Philippines, they have like... zoos or exhibits where you actually can drive through the maze, I guess. And while you're driving through, the lions are touching the cars, looking at the cars, but you're protected in your car. This woman got out of the car and got ate up. It's on the, it's on the, it's on the internet. It's on the internet. Um, I'll try to see if I can find that. She ended up getting murdered. So what I want to know is what was wrong with that woman at the Bronx Zoo? What was wrong with her? She better be lucky that that lion had been fed. He was good and full. Because if he was not full, he would have ate her up. My question is, did she have an unknown death wish? I mean, what was she trying to do? Was she tired of living and just said, okay, I'll go ahead and jump into this lion's den because if I get mauled by the lion, I'll probably die quickly, which a lot of times people don't. They suffer. Like I said, she had better be lucky that that lion had just been spared because if he had chomped down on her, he would have had some fresh meat. Stupidity, stupidity. Tell me in the comments what you think about that. Okay, you guys? I also have this story, and this is the last story because we're on 18 minutes um, in, uh, throughout this video. And this particular story right here, of all the stories that I have presented to you guys, this one is by far my absolute favorite of the wacky and interesting news segment that I have here on Carol's Daily Sauce. The title of this story is Home Wrecker Lawsuit results in a $750,000 award for the jilted husband who sued over his wife's affair. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all. Now you guys know states like Alabama, 
North Carolina, South Carolina, the quote unquote Bible Belt states still operate under a lot of the laws that were centuries ago. Some of them have been, you know, passed on, you know, diminished and are no longer relevant. But in this particular state, which is North Carolina, a woman's lover was ordered to pay $750,000. So if he's a homeowner and he don't have $750,000, he is no longer a homeowner. If he is renting an apartment and he works every day or has a business, $750,000 of that business will become the jilted husband's property. Okay, so what happened is the ex-husband filed a claim with North Carolina courts under the home wrecker law. Okay, the gentleman who had an affair with Kevin Howard's ex-wife was found legally responsible for having broken up a 10 year marriage. Now, I'm gonna stop really, really quick. A lot of times when people have an affair, it could be a result of something that has been ongoing. It could be um, that they've grown apart. There are several, several reasons for affair. Am I saying that affairs are acceptable? No, ma'am, no, sir. Not in my book. But I'm just saying the, the many different types of reasons that people would choose to have an affair. So it was a 10 year marriage. The wife decided that she was going to go out and have an affair. Now, the marriage broke up as a result of it. Kevin Howard, who was the husband, the jilted husband, said he filed a lawsuit against a man who had an affair with his wife and the charge that he charged the gentleman with was alienation of affection. Y'all know as well as I know that when somebody has an affair and they're living in the same household with their spouse, their attention span, their time, their money, I know you guys because I dealt with it. I experienced it. Everything changes, okay? Everything changes. So. The alienation of affections um, is a common law tort that North Carolina has. This common law tort is something that dates back to the 18th century in which women who were married to men were considered their husband's property. North Carolina is one of only six states that honor the home wrecker or hard bomb lawsuits brought by a spouse against a third party who has caused havoc or the breakdown of their marriage. That person is then held or is alleged responsible or liable for damaging a marriage that oftentimes ends in divorce. Kevin Howard, the jilted husband, filed the case because he believes that it is very important that people today understand the sanctity of marriage and that marriage is important. In a day and time, this is his quote, in a day and time where everyone questions the morals of others, I have to stand my ground. I say good for Kevin. I am all about marriage. I have had a divorce, but um, I don't condone that. I don't condone divorce. I mean, there are instances and in, stop it. There are instances and in things where divorce does happen um, for whatever reason, but it's not something that you want. I know it's not something that I want to see every day. Divorce. Divorce affects everyone. Divorce affects children. Divorce affects the entire family. 
and it could be lifelong effects. So I say good for him, good for him. I did want to tell you guys this, and I know you guys probably remember this, Fantasia. You remember that beautiful American Idol singer, that beautiful Fantasia, who is, Fantasia is, is um, one of the best singers that I've ever heard in my life, but she's almost like a swan. Now Fantasia is absolutely beautiful, but in 2010, uh, Fantasia dated a married man. She claimed back then that she did not know that he was married, still. She indicated that when he, um, when he um, got with her, he said that he was separated and had been separated for some time. Long story short, he was separated. He was a father of two sons. What the wife did is she filed, this happened in North Carolina, okay? The wife filed, Antoine Cook's wife filed a complaint for custody of the children, alimony and child support. I'm quite sure the Fantasia knew about the home record law, AKA heart bomb law, and was worried because at that time, Fantasia was doing really well. You know, even, even still now, you know, I love Fantasia. Don't get me wrong, you guys, I love her. I think she is just amazing um, in her craft. And I'm glad that she finally found love. Long story short, in 2010, Fantasia was hospitalized um, for an accidental drug overdose of sleeping pills and aspirin all around the time that this was going on. There were rumors that she tried to end her life um, because she was scared of the homewrecker heart bomb claim um, that could have been filed against her. It wasn't filed. And in 2013, Antoine Cook reconciled with his estranged wife. So, what do you guys think? What do you tell me? What do you guys think about someone being fined $750,000 because a marriage ended in divorce as, re as a result of quote unquote an affair? Do you think $750,000 is a lot? Is it too much? Is it enough? Would you take someone to court for that? That's some interesting stuff. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. Go ahead and put in the comments what you guys think. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to click on the bell to be reminded of all of the videos that I upload. Thank you guys so much. I'm enjoying this um, October um, and just doing things. I've got to get off now and find something else because I want to have something every day, including Sundays that I can schedule and upload because I have uh, started scheduling um, my videos um, so that we can always have something to um, present to you guys from Carol's Daily Sauce. Go ahead and put some comments in there. Um, you guys hit me up on my email and let me know some of the things that you might want me to check out. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. God bless each and every one of you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.